As we dive into the internal components of the x-ray tube, we have two main features that we're going to look at. One is the anode on the left, which is, has a positive charge, and the other is the cathode on the right that has the negative charge. The cathode itself has two main components, the filament and the focusing cup. The filament usually contains two coils of wire, one large, that's typically longer and wider, and one small, which is normally shorter and thinner. We use a large filament for exposures that require a high technique. However, we get less recorded detail. With the small filament, we use for exposures that require a low technique. The benefit being we get much greater recorded detail. The coil of wire is typically made with thoriated tungsten, which has a melting point of about 3,410 degrees Celsius. The second main component is the focusing cup. The focusing cup is negatively charged so that the negatively charged electrons naturally move away from it. This is really critical because it prevents divergence of the electron stream. By diverging the beam, it focuses all the electrons onto one specific point on the anode. Typically, the focusing cup is made from molybdenum. As we look a bit closer at the filament, we notice that it's very similar to a light bulb. As it heats up, it emits electrons. This process of removing electrons from the filament is called thermionic emission. The filament usually heats up to about 2,200 degrees Celsius, which is well below the thoriated tungsten's melting point of 3,410 degrees Celsius. The temperature of the filament is controlled by our MA setting. As the filament of wire heats, electrons float around the filament. We call these floating electrons around the filament an electron cloud. So the higher our MA, the more electrons are going to be in this electron cloud. An interesting effect of our X-ray tubes is what's called space charge effect. And basically what that means is that more electrons build up in this electron cloud, it becomes so dense that no electrons are able to come off the filament to go into this cloud. This effect usually limits our X-ray tubes to a maximum MA range of 1,000 to 1,200. Whenever you turn the X-ray machine on, a mild current is sent through the filament to keep it preheated. As you depress on the exposure switch about midway, the anode will start rotating and a higher current is sent to the filament to bring the electron cloud from the thermonic emission up to the proper size of the MA you selected. Beware as you're holding down the button midway, this could cause premature failure of the tube. Just like a light bulb, the filament will eventually break due to its use. So as you're holding down the button midway, you are using the filament basically shortening its lifespan. There are two main ways a tube can fail because of the cathode. One is a buildup of gas. Every time the film is heated, a little bit of the thoriated tungsten from the filament is evaporated off that filament and either deposited onto the glass of the x-ray enclosure or it remains inside the vacuum tube as gas. Enough buildup of that gas will cause an arc of electricity that will instantly ruin the tube. Another major cause of tube failure is the filament itself breaking. 
The filament usually lasts about six to nine hours of actual exposure time, but I've never had a tube break on me.